Today we have Peter from Harada, but you may know Peter from Extol. And at least at the time of the recording, yesterday or two days ago, Peter, I don't know if you know this, but we actually released our interview with Oli. And we interviewed Oli a number of months ago because uh, we wanted to talk to him about Extol and playing Furnace Fest. And Cullen and I are going to be at Furnace Fest. So we'll be able to hang out with Oli. And obviously, we know you're not going to be able to be a part of that. Um, but uh, we're still super stoked. We're obviously really stoked about the new Harada album. And we want to ch ch chat all about that. But uh, before we begin, uh, it looks like a beautiful day in Norway, and uh, I'm just super jealous of where you're at right now. I mean, like you got the lake in the background, you got the rolling hills, you got your beautiful yeah. deck. Uh, I feel like we should just be grilling out right now. We should, and you should. You should just come here. I mean, Norway is uh, yeah. the best place in the world. <laughs> yeah, it might be the most expensive barbecue I'd ever have at your place, but uh, <laughs> it, it would be totally yeah. worth it. Show us your setup mm -hmm. one more time. Your 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 cookout setup there. Oh, you want to see my cookout? Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, show, you have like it's YouTube like a viewers. it's like a full on oven and grill and everything. Holy cow! So, Look at this. So this is my this is my barbecue shack, and I build it with my own hands. So, Man, oh you're like goodness. a you're like a an honorary American. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the fjord in the background. This is just absolutely gorgeous, man. <laughs> Right on. Uh, oh, uh, Peter, what is your favorite thing to grill? Um, uh, like big whole stuff. So Ooh. like, I mean, it, my, my, my barbecue isn't that big, but I've had like a whole uh, lamb in there, which is oh really, God. really good. I've had the whole, like the smaller pigs in there. Um, so yeah, that's the fun stuff. But uh, wow, I, I can do anything. I, I also like to, to sort of slow cook like barbecue vegetables because it, it, it's mm. really, really nice when you sort of treat it the same way as you do with meat. Yeah. Um, basically, anything you can do with meat, you can do with the carrots. So, yeah. And like smoke, that. smoke carrots That's are right. really delicious. Yeah. Um, have you ever... Well, what was it? Oh, actually, I got, I got, I actually have um, uh, ribs on the grill right now, or on the, not on the, grill, nice. but on the smoker. They're, they're outside. Yeah. Hopefully, it stays to temp. But um, yeah, I, I was about I, to say, if they're on the grill, you better not be doing this podcast. <laughs> you're be your, you're be no, burning down your whole farm. It's a, it, it's slow going at 200 degrees right now. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep an eye on it. But I can't wait to go out and eat some of those ribs. It's gonna be great. Nice. So Sounds Peter, good. if you ever end up in South Dakota, I'll uh, I'll I'll smoke you some of my my homegrown pork. I think you'll enjoy. Mm, it. Oh wow! Oh yeah. Um, I'll I'll be there. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. Uh, smoked uh, smoked salmon or anything like that. Do you guys have salmon in in Norway? Oh yeah, I mean oh yeah, Norway is, uh, it's like the yeah together with uh, Alaska. I guess we're the salmon capital of the world. Sweet. I, I, I figured I figured that Norway probably had some pretty good salmon, but it's yeah. uh, after oil. It's um, the thing that we are uh, getting rich on. These days. Really? Wow. Yeah, we that export and, like and black metal music. Insane amounts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oil, black metal music, and salmon. That's uh... love it. <laughs> love it. I bet you cook up a a, a sweet sweet salmon. Uh sweet man. Yeah. Uh, Okay, we got to talk Rada, man. This is this is such a fun album. Mirrorland is is exactly what I hoped for. It's so lush and and cinematic feeling. Um, mm -hmm. uh, tell us about uh, tell tell us about the process. It's been a while since we've had you on. Last time we had you on, you had yep. two songs out. Now you've got the full album and everything like that. Um, I, I I'm in love with it. I know Mason's been 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 rocking it out a little bit as well. Uh, Tell us about the process of making it. Uh, what what was awesome about it? What was maybe not so awesome about it? Uh, how how'd it go? Yeah, wow. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, well, I think the last time we talked, uh, I thought that the album would be out like, you know, four or five, maybe six months yeah. from we talked. But uh, <laughs> what, when, when was it? When At least two years ago, years I would ago? say. Yeah, it's about two years, two years ago maybe? now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously that happened. Um, I guess it was also in the middle of the pandemic. So that sort of made things a little bit harder. Sure. Like me and Osman, uh, like we had many, many weeks every now and then where we actually couldn't meet. 
uh, or or we we didn't want them it just to be safe, you know. Um, so um, so that's kind of strange, but also uh, that was sort of the whole point with with Rada um, and and sort of one of the rules Osman and I made, uh, and one of the things that made me actually want to do music again was to to create something to create an album uh like a journey like an adventure with no expectations from anyone else um so if it takes a year fine if it takes three years fine no no worries we're just gonna have fun and we're gonna create what we want to create I love it. uh with no yeah no no input from anyone else no you know pressure no nothing um which i think was sort of the yeah, it sort of had to be that way for me to come back into music again. Yeah, I love it. Now, um, yeah. the album feels very conceptual. Um, is was there a concept behind it? I, I know that there was um, a little bit of uh, a discussion of that last time we had you on, but um, now that it's a full piece, would you say that it's 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 fully conceptualized uh, in terms of like having an overall theme? <clears throat> not like a proper like a theme theme thing uh but i mean uh the whole mirror uh thing is is sort of like a, a concept here i mean uh i think what three or four of the songs has something to do like has even mirror in the in the in the title and obviously the album is called mirror land so i mean it's it's a lot of the songs are about um us as human beings either mirroring each other uh, or how we sort of perceive the world through different mirrors. Um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, but, but I think like it, the, the, the most, like if you, if you're going to like paint the big red line, it's, it's just about, you know, being human, I think. And, uh, and everything, you know, that's, uh, yeah. Big themes like, uh, like love and, <laughs> love and war and hate and, and stuff no but uh yeah so j basically the the human aspect of of, uh, of this world like how how do we view each other how do we um like uh, treat each other um yeah so yeah so sort of like a a theme there yeah. i like it i was gonna say like i remember when we last chatted a lot of the album or at least the couple, sorry, not the album, but the couple songs that you had released, you mentioned like, you know, there is definitely some influence in the writing from like what, you know, American politics have been like over the last number of years and like just what's happening in the world over the last few years. And so it definitely does feel like there's some sort of social or even political commentary that is interweaved yeah. and, and not that like you're taking like certain kind of political stances or anything, but again, like you're just kind of making commentary and you're thinking through it um, from like a human perspective of like, what, what does this mean as a, as a human? Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah. Uh, and I mean that I think like for me always, like since Excel, like since I was 14, I started writing lyrics for Excel. Uh, I need to write something that is so sort of really, that fills my heart. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, how, how human beings interact with each other and how we, we treat each other in this crazy world these days, it really <laughs> fills up a lot of the space inside of me, uh, for better and for worse, because I mean, it, it can be quite frustrating and, um, yeah, agonizing to see how how we treat each other in this, uh, in this world. One of the things that I love also about this album is obviously you're singing throughout all of it and you have such an amazing voice. Oh my and God. every time I listen to your voice and think, wow, that's such an amazing voice. It is absolutely hard to believe the scream that I know is capable in that voice too. <laughs> and you know, let, let's say you, there was a person who doesn't know anything about X toll. They only know about Harada. Like I think they would be absolutely shocked that you have the scream that you do. It's just amazing given how beautiful and again, like I would even say cinematic your voice is. Oh, thank you. Uh, and I mean, Osman also sings like we, we probably sing like 50, 50. And I mean, we like on every, every song there's like three or four or five, mm -hmm. uh, you know, voicing. So I, I think the mix between us also makes it really special. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the other way around, I think people who has only heard extol will probably also think what the, what the hell is this? 
<laughs> I, I think I think Extol fans will love it as well, though. So if they haven't given it a chance, like I I think I think they're going to absolutely adore it. Um, it's hopefully, hopefully. It's, I mean, I, I've heard a lot of comments from Extol fans that say that they they can sort of hear like there is some Extol DNA in it, and I'm yeah, totally, I'm, yeah. <laughs> totally. You know, one other thing, and I don't know what this is or why this is the case, but when it comes to Scandinavian uh, musicians, especially vocalists, I noticed that you guys use the best diction when you guys sing. Uh, <laughs> I, I can always understand what you're saying uh, or like what Oli's saying or what um, uh, like another Scandinavian uh, idol of mine, uh, Christian Lingskog. I can always understand them. Um, but like a lot of American or English bands, like they're, you know, they're mush mouth and you can never understand them. I'm always impressed that like you guys being from a completely different country, um, uh, your, your, um, uh, obviously English not being your first language, just how well you present these, these really fascinating ideas and stuff like that through the music with such clarity and diction. Uh, is that something that you guys think about? Or is that something that you specifically think about? Like, hey, I want to make sure that everyone can understand exactly what I'm saying. Uh, I'm trying, but I mean, as you can hear me speaking now, and as you can hear on all my screams and all my my singing throughout, it's it's not a, an American or an English uh, person singing or screaming. So I have my my accent and my my way to to pronounce things which are not always correct but I, I i do my best yeah i i like it it's artistic license i think is what we call that yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what i would say I, 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 I actually listened to a couple of burial songs the other yeah. day um I, and i haven't listened to them for like many 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 years and uh, at that point i was also really really young so it's just funny to listen to like some of the words that i'm screaming it's like that's not even a word. <laughs> like you, you're pronouncing it so wrong. Like, <laughs> be like Sergeros, just making up your own language. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I do really love when somebody who is an American sings in English, and you can hear that accent. Though, like, there are a lot of British bands okay. that you can't even mm-hmm. hear that they're British. Like, if you didn't know like if you hadn't heard them actually talk like an interview you like wouldn't Ozzy. know that they're actually british yeah. exactly like exactly like, like like ozzy sounds like uh he's he's indistinguishable uh in terms of like what he's saying but then when he sings you can understand him pretty well right it's so yeah. weird to me but then you, like mm-hmm. one of my favorite bands from britain is uh black party they were like a post-punk band back in the 2000s and it's very yeah. cl- like he clearly has an english accent and i love that right. uh and yeah. and so i really love when you can hear somebody's accent and you certainly can hear your your norwegian accent as well in your singing and i think it's actually great there's clarity and there's diction uh but there's like still the accent that you can that kind of pulls through and i love that i really do yeah yeah i mean i'll only hope that you know people understand what what i'm singing but then also they might think that it's some maybe a little bit exotic or (laughs) something like that to give it a a little extra you know that's what they say about norway it's exotic (laughs) (laughs) i mean look at the fjord and oh man (laughs) so exotic so beautiful so beautiful. Are you able to actually um, do like drive motorized boats or anything on on a fjord, or is that like? Are, are you? Yeah, okay? of course. Are you, of course. Well, I, I, uh, yeah. in Minnesota, there's like a lot of lakes where it's uh, it, you can only do like paddle things, you know, like kayaking oh, or right. canoeing or something. You can't have motorized boats in them. Well, so yeah, up up in the mountains, uh, up in the mountains and stuff like that, you 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 can't. But uh, then you have to have the the rowing boats sure. and stuff like that. But um, I mean, like on the fjords and everything. That's yeah, so you got a boat, right? No, actually. What? <laughs> I, I, How do you I live that close like to a fjord boat. and not yeah. have a boat? You yeah. gotta have a boat. Exactly. Uh, I, I actually had the opportunity to get a boat for free, and I turned it down because I don't want the stress. Oh yeah. Well, that that's something that people <laughs> never realize and they never think about. When you get a boat, especially if you're in like Scandinavia, like where yeah, you, I mean, it's winter. It's uh, you know the the. You know, fjord turns into ice. You have to p- take the boat up. You have to store it somewhere, and then you, you have to clean it. Like him, I mean, I, and I'm not the boat guy. I, I have no idea how to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, no, 
Thanks, but no yeah. thanks. <laughs> no, I, I would be in the same boat as you. Wink, wink. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that, it's it, it's a lot of responsibility. But, yeah, and and I mean I mean this to be a, a little bit on the serious note. At least in Norway, probably you guys have it much the same. We we have so many things in our lives, like material things, and uh, I mean. I don't even have time to, to you know, do the laundry yeah. with three kids and, and full, full-time full job. I mean, how am I supposed to take care of a boat and a cabin and a, two cars and a dog and a cat and a cow? I mean, it's just, wow. you got a I'm, cow? I'm trying to down, downscale. No, no, I don't have a cow. I don't have a cat and I don't have a dog of those same reasons. I don't want to stress. <laughs> do you have a sauna, though? Uh, I wish I did, but I I take a sauna like three to four times a week. Oh, brilliant! So oh, you do. I do okay. sauna every week, many times a week. But uh, I had the uh, I was uh, sort of redoing my like underneath my garage. There was a space which was only like a storage or like a workshop kind of thing, and then I just cleaned it up and I had to there make a sauna or a music studio like a home studio. So it was the home studio. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes uh, sense. Asana is not going to be making you money. A music studio nope. could potentially make you some money. Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> potentially. Do you, when, yeah, when you go I, around, I mean, it looks like you're in this really like cool part of Norway. When you go around, like I would imagine your neighbors are like just, you know, regular people working, you know, like nine to five type jobs. You got probably doctors and teachers that you live around. Do any of them know what you used to look like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, my neighbors here. I mean, they've all been introduced to Extol, and uh, they were probably uh, all in black metal bands too, right? <laughs> yeah. No, actually, none none of them have been, but um, a couple of them are are metalheads. Uh, at least they used to be, like you know. So yeah, it's all nice. good. <laughs> so were they like awestruck when uh, when a when a metal god walks into their neighborhood and buys a house? <laughs> or? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, as long as you make sure you keep your house nice and clean and don't devalue our houses, we'll be on good terms. We don't care what kind of music you are into. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey uh, so, something that kind of surprised me, and I was not expecting this, but uh, a Harada version of Pearl. Um, that was mm. uh, that was a treat that I think everyone was surprised by and very thankful for. Um what was the thought process behind adding Pearl to Mirrorland? Uh, it was, I, I mean, when Osman and I met, he like, I don't know, 15-ish years ago, uh, he had never heard of Extol. So, so he, he didn't know about Extol when we met. And, uh, and then, so he got introduced to Extol through sort of Blueprint era. And uh, Pearl was just one of his favorite songs, like uh, from that time and, and like still today. Um, and I don't know really, I can't remember why we started talking about doing a, a, a version of it for Rada, but I guess we did. We, we started talking about it somehow for some reason. And uh, yeah, we made many, many, many different versions of it. Um, and I was never really happy because I, to be honest, I was a little bit scared because I know Pearl means like a lot to, to, to many people. And I just didn't want to, I, I had to sort of treat it in a way that I, at least I thought, you know, would communicate something and wouldn't be too crazy or too far away. Or, I mean, it's obviously far away, but it's, yeah. So I just wanted to do it. Um, what's the English uh, term? Uh, Give it just the respect and, and whatever the song need, needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was really unsure, like up to the very final point, whether or not to release it. But then I got this idea to ask my friend in Australia, John Reichardt, who was also a Pearl uh, fan. <laughs> um, and he's a hip hop producer in Australia. Really, really nice, talented, beautiful man. Uh, and I asked him, if he could put some beats on it and that's sort of when uh, everything fell in place for me that's uh, when I, I thought okay this 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 is different but it's it's uh, uh it's beautiful and it's uh uh catchy and it's um yeah this can work for me so yeah yeah mm. does it justice and, and i mean 
yeah, it doesn't justice. That was the phrase I was looking for. So I, I mean, I hope, uh, I, I hope people will like it. Obviously, it's not uh, the original, but it's uh, not supposed to be. So this is, yeah, our version of of, uh, of Pearl, and we we like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's I like Harada's it version. Yeah, <laughs> there's Taylor's version, and then there's Harada's version. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was a little bit, you know, like bringing into this kind of those kind of beats. I mean, it's something that obviously Extol would never have done, and and, and even Rada. I mean, it's it's not a typical Rada move to do either. So, but I I really to me it just fell in place when those beats came out. I love it. Um, okay, so we have uh, we have Extol playing at Furnace Fest, and and we, again, we know that you're not going to be there. Just to clarify everything for everyone, is there? There's no bad blood. There's no. There's no like. Oh, I hate Oli and the other guys. And, and um, uh, I, I'm, I'm. Although I'm, we would understand if you do. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I mean, I mean, uh, those rats can go burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it on the Black Sheep podcast. <laughs> Extol, we we have we have had so many requests for live gigs over the last uh, I don't know when was the last time we played live two thousand and seven or something six six well yeah, we played in two thousand and fourteen but uh, other than that I mean yeah so um, uh, and I, I I just I don't want to do live anymore um, but Ulla and David and now also. Christer, I mean, they they want to do it, and to me, I'm I'm just please do it because I I see that it means a lot to you. So go, just just do it. I, I really really support it, and um, yeah. So I'm I'm super happy that they turned uh, yeah that they said yes and that Elijah is uh, is stepping in. I, I think it's perfect, and they are also doing a show in Europe now. So I mean, yeah, all good those rats it's all good yeah. <laughs> those rats well and your replacement is really freaking talented too I, i'm forgetting yeah. his name now um but he you know he, he plays Elijah. with oli and he is so good yeah yeah elijah is awesome i mean he's got a great screaming voice so it's gonna be perfect it's gonna be great yeah i know it's uh it's one of the more um uh look forward to uh, uh, performances at Furnace Fest this year. So, um, yeah. you know, hats off to those guys. Uh, we're excited to go see them. And uh, uh, we wish you were there, but we totally understand, especially sitting where you're sitting right now. I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I got to go tend to my my dog and my cat and my cow and, and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's a long story. And maybe we can do it in the in the third uh, interview we, we have, in the, the third chat. But um, yeah, maybe another day. For sure. That's fine by us. Fine by yeah. us. Well, sweet. Uh, I love it. I, go I've got a couple more questions about her, the, the new album. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Cullen at the beginning mentioned cinematic and that really was the first, I like, that's the first thought that I had when I first heard it too. And obviously I even, you know, knew that from like the first couple singles you guys released. What was the motivation around trying to make something that sounded like it could have been a part of like, uh like it could have been a part of like a soundtrack what what was the motivation around that it's just very natural for me and osman i mean osman is a film uh, maker a director and um mm. and and when i create music I, I have a very visual way of creating it uh so telling a story through yeah i mean with with those visuals as a foundation so i mean yeah it, it was just really natural and a little bit um it, it wasn't really planned uh for it to become that much strings and, and orchestration and stuff like that i mean i've never done it before and austin has never done it before so we just tried it on on uh, on uh, yeah, i guess on gospel oak you know to put in some strings and then we're like well this is fun uh, arranging strings is fun and then we found this guy in London that, that you know, uh, helped us out, you know, recording the live strings and everything. And th that process was just so much fun and, and also challenging. And it like, okay, we can build on this. And then, you know, after a while, it was just like, 
yeah, obviously, obviously this album is over the top, right? I mean, it's way too much things happening all the time with, with all the strings and all the vocals <laughs> and, and just like piling on, piling on. But that was the beauty and the fun for us to, to, to sort of just, okay, let's dive into this uh, and, and see like, what can we create? Um, yeah. So, but I mean, him coming from the film background and, and yes, it be, it's just, just became very natural to have that kind of expression. Yeah. yeah, I bet there's like probably like 50 plus tracks in each song. Like if you look at like the oh, garage it's, band. It's, or... much, it's much more. It's much more. <laughs> oh, more? <laughs> I mean, 50 is just the strings. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. Know. Yeah, and then you have like, I don't know, at the worst, I'm trying not to extend it, somewhere between 50 to 80 vocal tracks with all the... <laughs> all the uh, yeah, like dubbings and all the oh my god, oh my god. and uh, <laughs> the the fi- the like just the amount of gigabytes per file has got to be nuts. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh. yeah, but uh, I mean, that's like the, you have to have like a whole computer room example. just to like hold like just to store each uh, Harada album. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, yeah, it's um, this. This is just like our our dream. Like this is. I don't think I could have done this with anyone else, uh, you know, do something that um, uh, much like, yeah. <laughs> like the, 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 the complete opposite of less is more. Uh, and I love it because that's a little bit me as a person. I'm not the less is more kind of guy. Like when I drink beer, it's, it's like the Belgian triple with the 10% alcohol. I mean, that, that's like, it's big, <laughs> it's bold, it's high alcohol percent. Like that's, that's my my favorite beer, right? So yeah, so I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> so are you also saying that maybe you they have like the beginning of alcoholism as well? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that yeah is more well. is more. <laughs> more is more. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I try to limit the the the, um, the amount of bottles I uh, consume. <laughs> well, that's good. Just but keep when it. When I consume, yeah, like yeah, and it's the same like with coffee and everything. I mean, I I just you know just buy the really good coffee that I like. Like it's way too expensive. But then I drink one cup a day and I'm all good. And you're good to go. I like that. I like that. There you go. Something that I think also kind of lends itself to that that cinematic lush quality is that, uh, and I don't know if this is intentional, and I don't know how much like music theory you know, because I I know almost none. Um, but it seems like you guys are using like different different scales than what you generally hear in, um, in most music these days, especially Western music. Um, and I don't, again, like, I don't know anything about music theory, but I do know that there are, there's, there's some scales that are being used there that are not what we would generally consider like the norm. Um, and I was curious if that was something that was thought about beforehand, or if that was just something that you're like, Hey, let's spice this up. Let's make something a little bit different than, than what people usually hear. Uh, That's a very easy question for me to answer because I don't know like a single note. I, I don't, I, I have no, no music theory inside me. Uh, so wh- when I'm orchestra, like, can you imagine having no theory and just putting together like an orchestra? It's yeah. just silly. That sounds but, so hard. But I have a lot of music inside of me, in my heart. Um, and with today's technical and digital uh, tools, it's so easy for me to just sort of uh, print uh, what I have inside here. Just yeah. put it out uh, on a MIDI keyboard and then, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I have no idea what the scales we are, uh, but I know we do different stuff than, than a lot of other. I think this is a unique album. And I think that's also with Extol. I mean, we have never been yes. known for making uh, <laughs> traditional uh, harmonies and melodies and uh, songs, yeah. right? So it's, I think it's just a part of me and us and sort of the environment that we have grown up into um, that makes us create things, you know, that are not that common or, yeah. Well, and that that's actually something I wanted to mention was that I think the reason that people kind of feel like they have, uh, or that Harada has this kind of extol vibe at times is because of, of those those melodies that are just a little bit different than what most people hear. Um, yeah. 
And I absolutely love it. When you, when you're making those melodies, is that something that like you would like sing out first where, where you might like, kind of like find where, where that melody should sound and then you try to replicate it? Or is it something that you just go right to the MIDI uh, keyboard and you just find it out there? For the vocal melodies, I usually sing it out. Uh, so I'll have sort of like the, the foundation, like the, yeah, the orchestration or the, you know, the drums or keys or whatever. And it's sort of like put, put a, a foundation there and then I just start singing it out. Sure. Um, yeah, so that's how I do it usually. I love it. And, and sometimes I will have like a melody stuck, on, you know, in my head when I'm driving a car and then I have to record it on the phone. But that's that's quite uh, rarely that that happens to me. I usually sort of create while I'm uh, in yeah, the process, doing, yeah. making the process. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mason, what was your question? Oh, I, I was going to ask something entirely different, but I do have one question around kind of just like songwriting for you. You know. It's been so many years since you've been with Extol. Do you, and now you've been writing with Harada for a few years. Like, do you ever catch yourself like in the process of like, you know, you, you stumble on like an idea or whatever, and you're like, wait, that's probably more of an Extol idea than a Harada idea. Or are you like so removed from Extol now that you're like only in a Harada mode and every idea that comes to you is simply Harada? I would say the last. Yeah, I, 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 okay. The thing is that I, I never really wrote a lot of stuff for Extol. Um, so mm. the things that I've been writing uh, earlier in my life has been more, um, yeah, not Extol kind of music. Obviously, I've written a riff here and there, and I've, I've contributed on, on the vocal melodies and, and obviously the screaming and everything like that. But I haven't been sort of like one of the main writers for Extol. So, um, so yeah, no, it, it's it's very um, very just into the Rada Rada mode. Uh, but actually, uh, when I wrote uh, the song called "Tainted Mirror," which is one of the last songs on the By album, by the way, my favorite song uh, on the album. Is yeah. it? I'm so glad to hear because uh, it's sort of like far down there, and I I I, I think that probably some people will not listen to it because like you know always in an album tracklist like you something happens and you don't have time to listen to everything or something like that. But that, when I wrote that, I had actually, uh, if not extol, at least sort of, uh, I put myself into a, a metal. Uh, ah. and so that has a little bit, uh, that was quite clearly for me, like, okay, let's see. If I take this mentality into this rather mentality, what happens? Uh, and then Painted Mirror happened. Interesting. That's cool. There's even the double bass drums on the, on the end there, if you have a... Have a it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Very reminiscent as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I think we're at the. I, I don't know what reminiscent means, but uh, thank ah, you. reminiscent <laughs> means uh, um, uh, having warm feelings about um, uh, a, a, a good memory in the past. So something sort that, of like, like nostalgia. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. I, I know the word. Sure. Know. Uh, all right. Well, Peter. Time for the most difficult question of, no, of, of the episode. No, I gotta go, guys. <laughs> Thanks for the talk. Your top five guilty pleasures. So the artists that you would be embarrassed that other people know that you kind of like or you kind of listen to every once in a while, or maybe you're a full fledged fan. Who knows? Uh, okay, so my problem is I, I'm really bad at names and, and uh, titles and stuff like that. Sure, but sure. there is there is this song called Daydream. Okay. Uh, by this, uh, I think she was like an idol. Uh, American Idol winner? Or, yeah. Or, uh, it, it, maybe not a winner, but yeah. I, either in America or in the UK. And, uh, and and the song is called Daydream. And I, don't, I don't even remember what her name is. Well, let's see if we can find it. <laughs> but that's... A, yeah, do it because I mean, uh, it's a really powerful uh, song. Like she's talking about not like, don't quit your daydream. Is it? Uh, her, her, her car is is it Li uh, Lily Miola? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lily Miola. It's a beautiful and and powerful song about you know uh, daring to to go go with your dreams. <laughs> I love it. That's so but corny. It's, it's, uh, like, That's great. <laughs> yeah, it is. So everybody take a listen, and uh, that's my guilty pleasure number one when it comes to 
comes to music these days. I love it. Um, what else? What else? What else? See, that's the problem. I, I don't really have many guilty pleasures because I mean, I'm a. I, I don't think like anything is really guilty. Yeah, that's what most um, people say, but we don't let them get off the hook that easy. <laughs> okay so uh help me out there help me out um there. all right uh, um, how about uh how about one of your contemporaries how about like f- from your early days maybe a band that um that you toured with or something like that that just didn't have the best reputation but you still really liked them yeah but I mean, it's not guilty pleasures. Like it's just like when it was how it was back in the days, you know. Like you know, loving, loving Petra when I was fourteen. That's not the Petra go, is one hundred percent a guilty pleasure. Yes, that's a perfect. It, is it? Oh yeah, totally. Beyond, Beyond belief is one of the best songs ever created. Yeah, exactly. Okay, a guilty pleasure number two. That is that is like the definition of a guilty pleasure. Okay, great. Well, well, actually, I listened to Beyond Belief uh, two weeks ago. We had a party here with some neighbors, and uh, one of them, he had never heard about Petra before. And the last party we had, like some months ago, we introduced him to Beyond Belief and Petra. And he has been listening to it nonstop <laughs> since. So, I mean, Petra has got himself a new, like, huge fan here. You know? <laughs> so, that's kind of he's 40 years too late. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it that's awesome yeah. that is awesome so that's that's my top two i guess that counts as five doesn't it oh uh, we, let's let's go at least one what about more. one more at least one more okay petro is a good um, one man i was i've been waiting for a petra call here <laughs> that was a good one let's see um okay it's so, uh, I don't know if, if I mean if anyone thinks that's uh, I think actually we talked about this the last time we talked about Billy Eilish. I, I mean I'm a huge fan. I think that counts. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. So if that counts, well yeah. Billy Eilish. We'll count that. It's my uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's always a little bit strange when uh how how old are you, Oli? Are you thirty eight, forty? Peter. Oh, 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 oh sorry, yeah, sorry, Peter. My bad. My bad. <laughs> no problem. Uh I, I'm forty three, yeah. Forty three. So uh, it, it's always a little yeah, bit strange when a 43 year old is listening to like a 19 year old, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not that it, you know, that's how it is. Yeah. Not meaning anything by that. That's not what I mean, but like, you know. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, it is like super popular yeah. pop music, but also it does sound yeah. a lot different than a lot of other kind True. of bubblegum pop music. It feels like yeah. The, yeah. the, the like antithesis of bubblegum pop music. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I think she, I mean, like her first, first, the, the first couple of things that she released that went sort of big, it's, I don't know, some of the best pop I've heard in my life. I agree. To be honest. I agree. Although at the same um, time, I'd be very embarrassed if I was pulled up at a stoplight and, you know, me with my like tattoos and everything, I look over and there's like a, an old lady or, you know, a, a high school kid staring at me as I'm like jamming out to Billy Eilish. I'd be a little bit embarrassed, yeah. but like, eh, I don't know if I'm like that comfortable, <laughs> that comfortable in my own skin, you know? So right. guilty well, pleasure. Yeah. We'll take I, it. We'll take it. I, I, I have one more. Actually, All right. And perfect. That's, um, that's a, that's a beauty. That's a, that's a catchy one. Uh, it makes me want to dance. Um, umbrella by rihanna you know hell yeah. <laughs> oh see peter I mean, you are you oh, are way better at this than you realize uh, i love it yeah these are all great oh uh, that's a great song oh we've uh, like me and my wife and a couple of friends we've been uh yeah we've been loving that song for ages wasn't she she was the super bowl performer this last year right mm-hmm well, know. yeah, he probably wouldn't understand because yeah, uh, you probably wouldn't know. But yeah, yeah. Super Bowl is that kind of like a sport or something? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's for the NFL. Is that where they have the? Is that on the ice with the puck and stuff? Yeah, that is. <laughs> yep. They uh they they win uh they win by scoring um uh, home runs. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my 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 son plays. Uh, baseball and my, my oh. older son plays baseball and my middle son he plays uh, American football really and no one nobody plays those sports in Norway so uh, you guys are Americans aren't you <laughs> yeah with the barbecue and <laughs> <laughs> no but I mean when uh, when they have baseball matches 
uh, you have to sort of combine. <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Games, yeah. Baseball yeah. games. We're going to go out on the baseball pitch today. <laughs> yeah. So, so when we have baseball matches, uh, I'm trying to score some goals. Um, <laughs> no, they have to actually combine three or four teams. Oh, really? Uh, to be able to be enough people to actually <laughs> play a game. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of so, like from, from three or four different cities. So, okay, this city and this other city will combine the teams and, you know, those two cities will combine the team and then we are enough people to play. <laughs> to play one game. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> to play one, yeah, exactly. So, so it's kind of crazy. So all we need then is for your son and his baseball team to get good enough to play in the Major League Baseball uh, so that yeah. we can actually have a World Series instead of just uh, uh, an, an American or a North American series. Yeah. yeah. And, and actually, even worse is, is American football. Like, like uh, <laughs> my son played for five months or four months, and there was one to four players uh, on, on practice uh, every day. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> that would be so difficult so, uh, to, to do. I mean, I know. Did they even? Like, Are we really doing it? Like, <laughs> uh, but he thought it was. He thought it was fun. Uh, and the coach he was like, "Yeah, it's been like this forever." So he didn't really care. Uh, and then, uh, and then he quits. But now he wants to join again because he, he just now it was too much fun. So he wants to. Was it? To, was it uh, tackle football? What, what like do you mean like, like when you when you hit another guy. Yeah, they were practicing everything, like tackles, really, and, uh, you know, throws, awesome, and, uh, tac- even t- even tactics, like you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. That would be a uh, wow. Th- that's a sport that where did, is, where did your sons almost, get your? I feel like that's a sport almost designed for uh, for for Scandinavians. Yeah, I, I think it could be big, but I mean, there's no money in it. So I mean, here in Norway, football or soccer, as you would say. Sure. It's like that's the only mainstream thing, and all the money goes into into that. Even ice hockey. I mean, Norway should be great at ice hockey. We have never we like we don't build it, build any rinks, so no one's playing. That's so weird to me. So, yeah, that's yeah, another sport really that strange. should totally be a Norwegian thing. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, what uh, is ice hockey like? Something that you guys would even like do just recre- recreationally to like play? You know, like you've got the big fjord in the background. Like, do you you know when it's when it's all ice and everything in the winter, do you guys like just go out and shoot the puck around, or is that like not something you guys do on the ice? I, I did that when I was younger, like in my uh, in, when I was a, a kid, and especially when I was uh, like in junior high and stuff like that. I, I went out like every day and played ice hockey, but not so many people do it. They they will play bandy. I don't know if you know bandy, but it's a huh. sort of you play it on ice. It's a much bigger goal, like so, almost like a soccer goal, yeah. a little bit smaller, more like a handball um, goal. And then you have a round uh, ball like this, um, and you have the, the stick is not uh, like a L, like uh, in hockey, but it's more like a yeah, sort of like a, a J or sure. yeah, opposite J. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Is that so like that's similar to broomball, right, Colin? Have you played broomball, Colin? I, or I or maybe uh, land hockey? Do you have that? We have lacrosse. Oh, yeah. field hockey. Okay, maybe field, like field hockey? Oh, yeah. Because sure. that's with a ball and everything and a, yeah. and a, a little bit different stick, isn't it? Yeah, that makes sense. That's probably that's probably pretty yeah. close to what it is. Yeah. It's not a very popular yeah. sport here. I've played broomball. I've played broomball though, where you, it's like, it's kind of like what you're describing where it's more of just a stick and then you have a ball, but you are on the ice. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we play this, uh, well, I don't know what you call it, the, the sport that the Harry Potter plays. Quidditch. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we play that and, and actually like fly, fly around. Like, yeah. Which, that makes sense. Which, which style. Yeah. That's the, uh, Norwegian. that's the Norwegian black metal, black magic, right? Like that yeah, gets you to do exactly. that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, Peter, what would you like to what would you like to plug here? Well, uh, obviously the new Rada album called Mirrorland. Um, yeah, would love uh, if people want to check it out. I mean, this is my my new my new baby. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I'm I'm really happy uh, with you know being back in music, and I'm 
I'm just, yeah, it's, it's sort of like a never ending flow of creativity still. I think I said that to you guys like two years ago yeah. and it's still just, it's, it's, it's like overwhelming. So basically the only thing I want to do this day is still is just to make music. So um, check out Rada and if you are in the US, go see Extol play at Furnace Fest in uh, whenever it is, September? Is yep, it October? end of September. November? Yeah, mm -hmm. end of September, right. So yeah. Um, thanks. Thanks for having me again. Is, uh, real quick, is um, is there more Harada on on the horizon? Are you still are you recording more stuff right now? Yeah. As we speak. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, every day writing new stuff, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I should I could say it here. I haven't. Uh, there will be a Christmas EP. I'll just say it. I'll really? put it out there in the world. Yeah. Like uh, of all originals, uh, or are they going to be reimagined uh, songs that most people w would know already? Both. Both. Oh, wow. That sounds like fun. So, uh, mm. so, so I'll put it out there. And when I say a Christmas EP, I'm hoping for Christmas 2023. But who knows? Beautiful. It might be 2024 or 2025. No, I'm quite sure. I mean, um, I have put a lot of work into it already. So okay. I think uh, I think there will be a November release. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Of it. Perfect. Also, one last thing. Is there a place to get uh, Rada... Um, uh, merchandise or anything like that uh soon i hope okay um so i mean like these day and age you can obviously sort of have this print on demand kind of solutions which makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. so uh, i think that's probably what we'll do try to find a good solution for that uh, because i mean and also just wanted to wait a little bit to see like is there any interest like i mean yeah this is our first album not that many people have heard of us yet, but uh, yeah, I would like to 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 put something out there. We made some some cups and a couple of shirts, like when we did the gospel oak yep. release and stuff like that, uh, so that we had like for giveaways and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it would be cool to to make some new. So I, I think we'll do that. Sweet, I would something. I would love yeah. a Harada shirt. So, uh, and actually, I think the the American label that releases this in the US, um, Mythic uh, Panda Records. I think they also are actually going to print some stuff. Beautiful. So, yeah. And there is a mm, deluxe great. CD version uh, uh, being released on Mythic Panda Records. I almost forgot that because, uh, yeah, it's on their table. But uh, it's already now, like, uh, I think beginning of July or something like that. Oh, wow. I don't know when, when this will air, but um, so there will be a deluxe version with um, all the songs instrumental beautiful awesome that's gonna yeah. be cool mm. that'll be like study music then yeah yeah <laughs> i love it hey peter thank you so much man this has been great we love having you on thank you for the spectacular view uh thank you for kind of letting us into your life a little bit showing us your barbecue pit tell us about harada we love <laughs> it um we we want to continue to uh support you guys in, in in whatever way possible because we're we're massive fans in every way so thank you so much thanks so much for having me again and uh yeah really appreciate it awesome i mean yeah as i said for us like you know it, to me it feels like starting all on scratch again right when you, you do something completely new so, you know, having guys like you who actually bothers to, to have a chat and to yeah, help us uh, reach out there, it's, it's really, really appreciated. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, man.